This is part two of the embolectomy case I had presented a few days ago in a 40 year old female patient with no risk factors. Now as you can see, this patient was on anticoagulation and was in ICU when she complained of pain and numbness of the left upper limb and the symptoms she had before the first embolectomy. Repeat CT showed a thrombosis of the left brachial artery almost at the same level and I took her back to theatre and you can see I am opening the brachial artery, the previous brachial arteriotomy site. The whole brachial artery is full of thrombus. The arrow shows the fasciotomy site of the first surgery. And just to show that this is a real thing. You can see the whole brachial artery is widely open now, but there is no flow. After giving full dose heparin this time, we passed the Fogati up the brachial artery and we could extract the, the thrombus. Now this thrombus was not as big as the first time presentation and you could also see the brachial artery there was good forward flow after this thrombus was removed. Having said that, multiple passes were made up the brachial system just to make sure there was no clots. Now despite being on adequate heparin, the patient has rethrombus and it was really puzzling. The only cause I could think of was that some kind of arthritis was going on in this patient and probably that was the cause for rethrombosis of the whole upper limb arteries. It was almost same like the first presentation. The only thing difference was the clots were not as thick as it was during the first case. They were quite soft and the radial artery after doing the first pass uh, embolectomy did have some backflow though it was not as great or as uh, expected. So you could see the clots being removed. This is the first pass down the forearm arteries. I'm not sure whether this is the radial or the ulna and um, we are making multiple passes and it required almost five to six passes to clear the radial artery of uh, all its uh, thrombus and you can see now we are extracting more and more thrombus. I guess this is a radial artery, not sure, but from the forearm arteries you get a lot of thrombus. Mind you, patient is on full dose heparin and oral anticoagulation and this has happened 48 hours after the first embolectomy. So after having adequate passes, uh, I closed the brachial artery. Uh, there was good pulsation there, but because the patient had rethrombosed, I was um, skeptical and wanted to see what's happening to the radial artery and you could see the whole radial artery is thrombosed here. So I had to open the previous arteriotomy site, expose the radial artery again, put vessel loops to control the, the bleeding and I opened the radial artery again at the same arteriotomy site. There are reports in the literature where people have done almost 6-7 embolectomies and uh, then considered doing um, intraclot uh, thrombolysis as well as one of the methods of treating these patients. But uh, this kind of a situation was being faced by us for the first time. Though many surgeons had commented that they have seen this and it's very common in their setup, but it's, it's not common in our setup. One has to wonder why the patient should rethrombus despite being on adequate anticoagulation. The only way it explains the situation would be some kind of arthritis that would be happening. Though we have sent a whole battery of investigations to rule out autoimmune phenomenon. So you can see the whole radial artery, there's a lot of clots being extracted from up the radial artery towards the brachial system. And there's lots and lots of these clots. The only thing they're not as organized as they were during the first surgery. The forward flow is also not that great. So we had to make multiple passes to have a good forward flow. So this forward flow is not that great. So multiple passes were made along the radial artery towards the brachial side and during every pass you could see the clots being extracted. Now the distal artery flow is adequate or there is good forward flow from the radial artery as you could see by the gush of blood. Uh, 
started. The distal radial artery is still thrombosed. You can see it's blackish. So we had to pass the Fogarty catheter down the palmar arch. And um, as expected, there was a lot of thrombus in the system and we had to do multiple passes to clear the arch of its thrombus. Now this time around, we started the patient on oral steroids and since then she's uh, recovered well and has been discharged. The logic of presenting this kind of embolectomy is for clinicians to know that some amount of arthritis uh, should be the cause of rethrombosis in patients and I guess steroids would be helpful in this situation. I would really request the viewers uh, to share their experience, if, uh, if any, of such kind of scenario. You can see here the uh, radial artery is bleeding very well after releasing the proximal control. Now this is another patient, second case, embolectomy done by my colleague, rethrombosed radial system uh, seen on day two in the ICU and we had to again do a redo embolectomy uh, bedside. You can appreciate the amount of thrombus that's there in the radial system and uh, that could be extracted bedside. So we had two cases, consecutive cases of rethrombosis despite the patient being on anticoagulation and we also changed the, the batch of heparin just to make sure that the heparin was working well. So if you like this video ladies and gentlemen please click the like button and subscribe to my channel don't forget to ring the bell just to be intimated of my videos well in time thanks for watching thank you very much